we have a special guest here in the studio, the international media spokeswoman for the Pyeongchang Organizing Committee, Nancy Park. Uh, Ma'am, Ms. Park, Nancy, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I know it's a busy time. We appreciate you uh, taking that time to uh, uh, come here and visit. Uh, We spoke on the phone uh, briefly uh, uh, weeks ago. I know it's hectic. Just overall, uh, what would you say the status is? How are the preparations going? Well, the preparations are going really well. As I mentioned when we talked last time, it was our 100 days to go until the Games. And now we've passed our second landmark, the 50 days to go. It's a really exciting time. Uh, The Olympic torch relay is traveling throughout the country. People around Korea are getting really excited about the Games. We're doing the last-minute preparations for everything. I can tell you we're really confident about how things are going. The venues are ready. uh, The stadium is ready. The villages are ready. Um, Everything is ready, so we're really doing the last minute preparations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now we're getting ready to welcome the athletes that will be coming in uh, in a month's time. Um, Everyone that's going to be coming to Korea is going to have a great time. We're just really excited about uh, everything that's coming up. You know, you are the spokeswoman. And so, you you know, to put it I guess, kindly, uh, it is your job to make sure that there is a friendly face on how everything (laughs) is going so far. But we do know that uh, the patterns have always been, oh, this country or this city is hosting this major uh, event, whether it's the Olympics or the World Cup or other kind of uh, worldwide global scale uh, type of organized event and then automatically, oh, how are the preparations? Are the construction going to be finished? Uh, is there enough money in the budget? Uh, how, 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 how much is that lacking? Would you say overall, though, it's been relatively less drama-free than maybe other big events? Well, you know, in terms of how you define drama, so right now we have everything that's ready in terms of infrastructure, um, all of the operational things. Of course, there's a lot of different issues in Korea that create a lot of uh, concern as well. But overall, we think that, you know, things are going really well. You know, people are getting excited. Um, You know, there's going to be 3,000 media coming in. Over 10,000 broadcasters are coming into Korea. Everybody really wants to know uh, what kind of country Korea is, how well we're able to host the games you know, what kind of competition we're going to have. And it's also a great opportunity for people in Korea to be able to, you know, showcase everything that's just so Korean and showcase Korea to the world. So all around, you know, it's just a great opportunity uh, coming up uh, for for people to understand, you know, what kind of country Korea yeah. is, really showcase Korea around the world. I believe you are younger than me, but I believe you <laughs> also are old enough to remember the 1988 Seoul Yes, I do remember. I do remember. Yes, I do. (laughs) And uh, that was, of course, an historic event here in Korea. I mean, as you say, the showcase of the world, this really kind of signified that South Korea is a player on the global stage. Uh, We've come through the ashes of the Korean War. We are now uh, a prosperous country. Uh, This is now in 2018, of course, a very different Korea. In, in, In other words, in terms of showcasing to the world, there are different aspects now that South Korea would like to showcase, right? Well, back then, it was more about putting Korea on the world map. You know, where is Korea? Well, it's somewhere out in Mm. Asia. And really just, you know, at that time in 1988, I remember, you know, all the broadcasters was just, you know, introducing Korea. What what is Korea all about? Where is Korea? But now it's more about introducing what, you know, what Korean culture is all about, the technology, the music, the food, everything that's so, uh, you know, great about Korea. It's a real good opportunity to introduce this all to the world and really put Korea on the world map in a different way. So, you know, it's great to differentiate Korea and how great uh, the culture is, the food, um, you know, our warm hospitality, everything that's so really nice about Korea. I want to talk about and You know, this is obviously something that uh, no matter how perfect you want everything to go, there are going to be challenges and there are going to be concerns. Uh, one concern has been, and this is really no, no <laughs> I suppose, uh, situation that you can personally control, but Mm -hmm. because of the tensions and Mm -hmm. because of some of the uh, fears that uh, North Korea, uh, with its continued provocations and sort of uh, this uh, idea that Northeast Asia security might be imperiled, we're seeing these murmurings, right, from Mm -hmm. uh, Western Mm -hmm. officials, whether it's France or or otherwise, including in the media, where they're saying, we're we're kind of uh, slightly worried that uh, we wonder if it's safe for our athletes to go. How do you address those concerns, especially when you're talking to uh, international media or international national officials. 
Well, safety and security is a it's a concern for every organizer of every Olympic Games, and so you know it's no exception for Korea. However, we do know that there's a lot of concerns uh, about the political situation here. Um, you know, people are expressing uh, you know worries. You know, is it all right to go? So we're trying to tell people, uh, give people information about what we're doing to make sure that the games are safe. So, you know, we're working with 19 different uh, organizations in Korea. We're w- working with international organizations, um, getting this information to all of our stakeholders. And so far, the response has been pretty good because, you know, no one has said, you know, we're not going to the games. Everyone has been uh, very supportive. Uh, everyone's looking forward to having great competition. Uh, we went, we met with a lot of international, um, National Olympic Committees to tell them, you know, look, this is what we're doing. Um, it's going to, you know, we're doing what we can to ensure the safety and security of the games. Your athletes will be safe. Uh, all of these different things. So I think it's really important to get this information out there and make sure that, you know, people know that, you know, we do understand what the concern is and that we're doing something about it. So, um, so far, everyone has been very supportive. Um, everyone is very excited about sending their athletes. And, and of course, we're, we're ready to welcome them. There are some I I suppose pros and cons and different aspects with hosting a summer games uh, like Mm -hmm. we did in Seoul in 1988 Mm -hmm. and a winter games because uh, the target demographics, I think, are a bit different because with the uh, summer games, you you, you of course want visitors from from Africa, South America, from uh, Europe, from the Americas, Uh, whereas the winter games, I think we can largely say that a lot of the marketing, uh, quite frankly, just because of the uh, limited amount of countries that participate in these kind of winter sports, uh, largely center in the Americas and in Europe. uh, And uh, there had been questions previous to uh, the events being taken about Pyeongchang being somewhat remote and not really part of the big population center and logistically how difficult it is for these Europeans who would want to make their way here and and how they would navigate this and and that awareness that is raised. Have we addressed most of those issues in the lead up? Obviously, uh, we're less than 50 days away. Well, the Olympics are always held in a different city, right? So um, for the Winter Olympic Games, obviously, it's always ever been hosted in North America or just in Europe, hosted in Japan twice. So out of Japan, we're the first country to host right. the Winter Olympics. If Olympic we count Games. Sochi as part of Europe, right? Right. So yeah. um, what we have here is a new environment. So, you know, part of our vision of New Horizons and developing sport in Korea and in Asia, you know, we, we've been introducing the idea that, yes, uh, winter sport can happen outside of North America. America and outside of Europe. So with the Olympic Games, you know, all the athletes, they're excited about, you know, coming here and everything. uh, There's always there's the requirements that take place for all of the games. So for these requirements, we make sure we work with all of the, you know, the committees, the the National Olympic Committee, the International Olympic Committee, all these committees, we work to ensure that all of the basic requirements for the athletes and the officials and the entourage and the Olympic movement and the families, they're all met. So the the athletes are pretty excited excited about coming here to Asia. And also, uh, it's a different environment. They're looking forward to a winter environment, a winter games. Because the previous games, Sochi and Vancouver, they were, tropical, right? they, they were a little bit warmer. And athletes over the past two winter seasons that have been at our test events, they've said that they love our courses. We got great feedback about our venues. Um, and we have good snow. And so, you know, everyone is excited to having a real wintry environment because it's a winter games. And so uh, the feedback of the athletes, which Mm. is actually most important, uh, you know, we can say we're really good. But the athletes have been, you know, posting on social media, you know, all these different great comments about, you know, hey, we went to Pyeongchang and the courses were great. And actually using language that I don't understand, this younger generation. But, you know, they're, they're telling us that the, the courses are great, the venues are great, you know, uh, great to come to Pyeongchang. So they're kind of spreading the buzz yeah. that the competition will be great. Well, speaking of Pyeongchang, and uh, let's talk about this as far as maybe an elevator pitch. If you're talking to somebody who's never visited the region, they don't know anything about Gangwon-do, uh, they don't know about Pyeongchang, and someone who has been there, I, I'm, 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 mm-hmm. sh- I'm assuming probably far more than you ever hoped or realized you ever would now and you will much more in the next up and coming days what are the attractions why is it um, important and uh, enjoyable for someone to visit Pyeongchang well, everything is located uh, very closely together. It's a very compact venue environment. So we have uh, all of the snow and the sliding sports located in the Pyeongchang region and all of the ice events located in the Gangneung region. And everything is located uh, 30, 40 minutes uh, of Olympic Plaza. So what it means is that you can really enjoy a lot of different competitions um, 
uh, on the same day. You only, if you only have a few days to visit Pyeongchang, you can come to see like the Olympic is the greatest comp- the greatest show on earth, and it's the greatest competition in the world. And people can come. You can go to Gangwon, uh, Gangneung to see ice hockey, um, and then see curling in the morning. You can go in the afternoon. You can watch cross country biathlon, take the train. Everything is so compact. Yeah. And in addition to the great competition, we have a lot of different cultural events going on. A lot of different uh, you know showcases of, you know, different technologies, different, you know, different things uh, that are enjoyable for everyone. So you see not just the sport, but you also see, Mm. uh, you get to learn about Korean culture and take the opportunity. And Everything is so compact, so you can really travel around uh, very easily. You were telling me before you went on air, uh, it's not just part of your official duties uh, in what you're doing as uh, a spokesperson for the uh, Pyeongchang Organizing Committee, but you are also personally just a huge sports enthusiast as a participant and also as a spectator. Personally, for you, what are some of the events that you're looking forward to? Well, I grew up in Canada, so I'm Ah, really interested in ice hockey. You know, back in school, you know, we have to do curling. Mm -hmm. We have to do, you know, cross-country skiing. Those are the things we do part of, you know, phys ed classes. But um, in general, I'm looking forward to the opening ceremony. Mm Because really, the opening ceremony, it's got so much. All the athletes, you know, they come in. There's all these cultural, uh, you know, events and cultural component of it. I think it's really great. So I'm looking forward to to uh, the competition, but also the opening ceremony. And as actually, um, we have six new events for our Olympic Games. We have um, snowboard big air for men and women. We have mass, uh, mass dart speed skating, men and women, uh, mixed curling, and also the alpine team event. So these new events are also going to be pretty exciting because it's the first time they'll ever be in the Olympic Winter Games. What do you hope uh, will happen uh, when it's all said and done with Pyeongchang 2018? Well, I just want people to remember, you know, that Pyeongchang was a great competition. But overall, for the people that come here, not only just come to the competition, but who also see the Olympic Games on TV. I mean, it's going to be broadcast and uh, and billions of people around the world are going to see it. But I want people to remember that Pyeongchang was a great Olympic Games and that Korea is a great country. So it's really a great opportunity for people to learn more about Korea. And so I just want people to understand, ah, we had a great competition. And look, Korea is such a great country. Look at their technology. Look at their culture. Look at all the great things that Korea has to offer. So in the long run, I just think, you know, we have a great games and it's a great country. I think it's a great uh, opportunity to promote. Well, hopefully everything goes without a switch. Uh, We know that uh, there are some great professionals involved, including yourself, (laughs) to try to uh, uh, bring this to a successful conclusion. I want to thank you so much for joining us, uh, Nancy. Uh, It's been a pleasure. We know you're very busy, so you've been gracious with your time. Obviously, the best of luck to you, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. (laughs) 